Welcome to Bible Tract Echoes. This program is the radio ministry of Bible Tracts Incorporated. Our mission is to take the Word of God to all the world. Our Bible teacher is the director of Bible Tracts, Pastor Mark Smith. Since 1938, Bible Tracts Incorporated has been publishing clear gospel tracts and supplying them to churches, missionaries, and individuals all over the world, and all at no charge. Information on how you can receive a free sample pack of our tracts will be given at the end of this broadcast. Now for our Bible study, here is our teacher, Pastor Mark Smith. Hello, my friend. Thank you for making the broadcast a part of your day. Frankly, I want to say thank you for being a person, a follower of Christ who wants to grow in grace and knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. You and I need to be more like Christ. Amen. Well, right now, my Bible is sitting open to the book of 2 Peter chapter 2. If you can, don't reach over and pick up that electronic gadget of yours. Get your Bible out. Join me there. 2 Peter chapter 2. Also, get something on which you can uh, jot down some notes notes, because not only do I want you to jot down some notes from our study, but I want you to be ready also to have the information necessary to get from us a sample packet of free gospel tracts. The sample packet contains one each of all of our English gospel tracts. We want to give it to you. Frankly, I want you and I to be a a partner together in the work of evangelism, getting out the gospel. This is our 80th year of giving away gospel tracts free of charge. Let me send you that sample packet. Have pen and paper handy. I'll talk about one of the tracks here in just a minute, but let me lead into our study time this way. The word I want you to think about for a few moments is the word suspicion or suspicious. I grew up being warned about suspicious looking people. I guess my parents were teaching me a form of profiling. You and I live in an era when we had better have some decent levels of suspicion when it comes to our credit card and bank account information. That There are some schemers out there trying to get our money. That is a good kind of suspicion. You and I would agree with that. But when it comes to living in our era, the idea of there being absolute truth, well, the world says that's suspicious. And that when you and I say that absolute truth actually exists, well, that's suspicious. And if you say that in front of people, that there is absolute spiritual truth, then you are going to be held in suspicion by those who do not believe the Bible. Well, here in 2 Peter 2, God, through the apostle Peter, is declaring that there is a way of truth, but God is warning that there are religious religious teachers who not only do not believe God's truth, but they are actively turning people away from God's absolute truth. Now, these teachers and those who follow them are headed for an awful judgment. How do we know that? Well, because the God of truth has judged these kinds of teachers and followers before. That's what the passage is about. Get your Bible and join me, please. I mentioned a gospel tract here a moment ago, and by the way, a gospel tract is simply a short written presentation of God's plan of salvation. It's an evangelism tool. The one in my hand right now is entitled, What About Eternal Life? Well, let me ask you, what about eternal life? Can you explain to somebody what the Bible means by the term eternal life? Everybody's going to live forever, but what does the Bible mean about eternal life? The Bible here is opened in the gospel tract, is explained that eternal life is a gift from Almighty God. This little illustration is used in the middle of the tract. It says this, and I'm reading now, it is bad manners to insist on paying for a gift. Suppose you invite me to a delicious steak dinner. Now, if I should insist on paying the bill, you would tell me to take a course in etiquette. Well, friend, you and I understand that if I invite you for steak dinner, I'm paying the bill. If God's going to offer you at his own 
own expense, eternal life, then how foolish for you and I to think we have to merit it and buy it by some form of good works. Eternal life is a gift of God found in the person of Jesus Christ. What a clear gospel tract. Please get it from us. At the end of the program, my announcer will make known to you three ways by which you can contact us. If you cannot wait to the end of the program, just go to our website, which is BibleTracksInc.org. The word tracks is spelled T-R-A-C-T-S, BibleTracksInc.org. Please let you and I become partners in the work and the heartbeat of Jesus in telling sinners the gospel. If your Bible's open there, 2 Peter, beginning chapter 2, beginning at verse 3, says this, Speaking of false teachers, who through covetousness shall they with feigned words make merchandise of you, whose judgment now of long time lingering not, and their damnation slumbereth not? For if God spared not the angels that sinned and cast them down to hell, and delivered them into chains of darkness to be reserved unto judgment, and spared not the old world, but saved Noah the eighth person, and a preacher of righteousness bringing in the flood upon the world of of the ungodly, and if God turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes condemned them with an overthrow, making them an example unto those that after should live ungodly. I'm going to stop reading there with that verse. Now, if your Bible's open there in front of you, please look at the end of verse 3. It ends with the punctuation mark of a period. Verse 3 is one complete sentence. But notice the next verses, verses 4 through 10. Verses 4 through 10 do not end, except for verse 10, with a period. It's all one long and sometimes complicated sentence. For the sake of my outlining of the second chapter, I'm going to cut this long sentence in half. My title for verses 1 through 3 is this, apostates and their judgment. And look, verse 3 ends with these words, their damnation slumbereth not. Now, wow. Did you see the word damnation? That's sure not a very popular word among religious teachers today. But there it is. And by the way, this is the fourth time that this word damnation, the Greek word, is used here in these verses. The Holy Spirit has moved Peter to use this word four times. To experience damnation means to experience destruction, to perish, to become a waste. Here in our verses, God says that the false teachers, uh, those and we've been calling apostate teachers, these false teachers were going to be judged by God. They are going to face eternal destruction in hell. Why? Because God has judged willful sinners and open truth deniers before. Our verses 4 through 6 begin with our English word for, F-O-R. It's the idea of because. The next word in verse 4 is the word if. That Greek word can be translated if or since. Since God did this kind of judging that's listed here, he's done that in the past, then it is logical that God would do it again. My friend, God cannot change. He cannot change and be God. God cannot change. Since God judged false teachers and their followers before, then he is going to do it again. My outline title for verses four through six is this, ancient judgments, ancient judgments. Three examples of God's ancient judgments on truth deniers are given to us here. Verse four is the first one. I've called this rebellious angels, rebellious angelic beings. Verse four talks about these rebellious angels as the first illustration of how God judged truth deniers. Their story, by the way, of rebelling against God is also found over in the little book of Jude in verse six. Now, these angels are some that followed Satan. Satan's original name was Lucifer, but they followed Satan, and they are the ones that God has already placed in chains of of darkness. There are some great preaching that could be done here, but let's cut to the chase and come to a key takeaway for you and me today. 
these angels that were living around the throne of God saw the holiness of God. They were not too holy in their original place, or they were not too powerful in their personal strength to be judged into damnation. So let's learn. There is no teacher, no matter how holy their life may seem, if they teach error, that will not be judged severely. Verse 5 gives illustration number 2, the rebellious world of sinners in Noah's day. God judged those rebels. Verse 5 reminds us that the people then did have the truth because Noah was a preacher of righteousness. He preached for 120 years. But also knows, note, verse 5 uses the word world, W-O-R-L-D, twice. It's used there in contrast to the eight people, Noah, the eighth person there. You see, the flood and the judgment was worldwide. The takeaway here for you and I is this. There is no group so large and so consequential that they cannot and will not be judged if they rebel against God's truth. God judged the entire population of the earth except for the eight people in Noah's family. Verse 6 is a third illustration. Here we find the rebellious cities of Sodom and Gomorrah that were judged by fire. You and I know that these that this verse here in our day is not politically correct. The sin that was rampant in those two cities is called fornication. It's called going after strange flesh over in the book of Jude in verse 7. Some have tried to make the sin of these cities into something else than what we know it was. In Sodom, the people had changed the moral standards of the culture. They had changed the definition of marriage. They had changed from everybody having the, a right and the personal autonomy to have their own opinions about stuff to what you and I call group think. Everybody was supposed to agree with the moral change of the day. And if somebody had old-fashioned biblical standards, then the, a riot would break out. In looking at our present-day cultural slide into the same Sodom-like practices, we are forced to agree with the old saying that says, if God spares the today's cities from judgment, then he's going to have to apologize to Sodom and Gomorrah. God is patient. He's patient with sinners. God not only is patient, he provides truth to sinners. But if they, those sinners, trample his patience and trample his truth underfoot, God will judge sinners. He has done this before. God has judged sinners before. God must, because he's holy, judge sinners again. He cannot change. God does not conform to you and your idea of truth. You must, I must conform to him and his truth and adjust our lives. We must accept his truth, but not just accept his truth. We must accept his offer of eternal life through the person of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, God in flesh. Dear friend, there's one Savior. It's not you. It's not me. You can't save you. I can't save me. Our goodness cannot do it. You and I will live forever. The gospel track, eternal life says we're all going to live one of two places forever, an eternity in heaven with God or eternity in hell with Satan and his angels. The where you spend eternity will depend upon what you do with Jesus Christ right now. Thank you for joining us today for Bible Track Echoes. If you would like to receive a free sample packet of our tracks, you can contact us by calling 309-828-6888. Our mailing address is Bible Tracks, P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. Again, our phone number is 309-828-6888. And our mailing address is P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. You can also contact us through our website. Our web address is BibleTracksInc.org. Remember, the word tracks is spelled T-R-A-C-T-S. That address is BibleTracksInc.org. May the Lord richly bless you as you serve Him.